Hello YouTube, it is Toya Ruth from the Divas in the Details and I was just popping in because lately I had been watching um, perfume videos. I think it's because it's just fall and fall is all about, um, to me, um, warmth um, in the colors. So we have the green leaves going away and we're starting to get orange and yellow and amber and red leaves and you just want to snuggle up like the wind is rustling, put on a light jacket, take a walk in the park, watch the kids fly kites, make for me pies. Um, I'm drinking more coffee, more tea, just trying to get all snuggly. And so it just made me think of fragrances. So I've been watching a ton of fragrance videos and I was like, hey, I got some fragrances I can talk about for fall. So I'm gonna be talking specifically about fall date night fragrances in this video. And um, I think I have something from a, a decent amount, maybe like four houses that we're going to talk about. So that'll be good. Um, so I first want to start off with this fragrance um, from a house that's very classy. I love like their handbags. Um, and I think that they have something for everyone. So they have kind of like younger, fun, playful fragrances and then much more mature fragrances and then something, um, just something for everyone. And so the first house we're going to talk about is Christian Dior. And this fragrance, Dior Addict, this fragrance, um, I picked this up and I think I'm drawn to it because it kind of reminds me of my mom in a good way. Um, so it's more mature. I feel like with this fragrance, this is a successful woman. She has a plan and direction for her life and she knows about the means to go about pursuing it. And because she's so confident that reads sexiness, it's a rich body fragrance. It's gonna last a long time. Um, she's committed. And I just, I think this is beautiful. This is definitely a nighttime fragrance. It's very heavy. Um, and heavy like um, it's on you, people can smell it, but not offensive, um, not shocking, um, not kind of like obtuse or gaudy. It's very classic, and I think that's what reminds me of her, too, that this is a classic fragrance. So this was released in 2002, um, so that was 18 years ago, and it is blackberry, it's mandarin, it's orange blossom, jasmine, and it dries down to sandalwood. Um, very cozy fragrance, um, and it's just lovely. Um, this is the Eau de Parfum, and this is 1.7 ounces. Um, I think this is a beautiful fragrance by Dior. Staying in the Dior family, I have Hypnotic Poison, and this is the Eau de Toilette. The reason why I got this fragrance, and this fragrance has been out since 2000, so it's so sad that I've only been using this for like about a year. Um, but this reminds me of like Adam and Eve, the Forbidden Fruit, and um, like Maleficent, like the evil stepmother trying to trick, you know, this damsel in distress, and then she finds a way to conquer the challenges that are in front of her. Um, because this is a fragrance that is kind of got like a troubled past to it, I like the fact that they started off with the first note being bitter um, almond. Um, there's caraway, caraway spice, so it's like, oh, this is spicy, this is catching, this is suspenseful. Um, because there's going to be some conflict in here. Um, and then it moves into Jasmine Tuberose. So if this were a movie, like, then the damsel is not so much a damsel anymore because she's taken over and you can see this beautiful person breaking free of this, you know, evil person. And then it ends in vanilla and musk. This is such a lovely fragrance. And this is truly like... I'm embracing life, I'm taking the challenges, and I'm having a great time, I'm looking great doing it, and it's just lovely. Um, this is such a good fragrance. It translates to um, many ages, I feel like. This could be 20-year-olds through 40, 50-year-olds. I just, I think this is beautiful. I'm gonna keep ordering this over and over again. It's beautiful. This next fragrance, I don't hear talked about a lot, and it is still an iteration of Poison. This is Christian Dior Pure Poison. And this is much lighter than Hypnotic Poison, and they both have their place to me in the Poison line. 
Um, first of all, I love this bottle. It's pearlescent. Um, it's opaque. It has um, a purple top, which is my favorite color, which is a departure from the other points, which tend to be some shade of red, um, like a blue red, a maroon. And I think this is a nice um, addition. This is sweet orange. I think that's why I'm so like, it makes me happy and it's light. It's sweet orange, bergamot, super duper sweet when it starts off. But then um, the middle notes are jasmine, gardenia, um, sandalwood is the base, um, along with amber and musk. This was released in 2004. I think that it was a perfect flow with the line of poisons. I actually chose this um, and started wearing this over Poison Girl because when I tested the Poison Girl in the store, it was super duper sweet, almost like candy. And um, my unpopular opinion, I don't like fragrances that are super duper 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 sweet, like candy, um, kind of putting me in the mindset of like um, the Prada candy or Versace Bright Crystal. I feel like that's so sweet and it reads super young to me. And um, I'm just at a point where I don't want to smell like that. I would buy those fragrances for like a teenager or um, a college student that, you know, is jazzy, she's living life, super sexy, exploring, but it's just not for me. Um, so that's just, I like warmer fragrances. I like woody fragrances. I love amber. I love vanilla. I like to feel like um, I'm engulfing you in things that I love, like I'm sitting around, um, breaking bread, having food, telling stories, um, or doing something that's like going out um, to like a fundraiser and we're dressing up and we have our formal full-length gowns on and stuff like that. Um, so that's just my opinion about that, about Poison Girl. I would do Poison Girl if I could layer it with a different fragrance that was much more savory to balance out some of that sweetness. So I'm not going to just totally write Poison Girl off. Um, I know some YouTubers have recommended layering Poison Girl with um, Tom Ford Black Orchid. And so that may be something that I venture into into the future. But for now, these are my two favorite Dior poisons. Next one is none other than Miss Dior. So Miss Dior is a very classic fragrance. It was released in 2012. This is the one that I feel out of all of these that translates through all age ranges. Um, okay, let's have a moment of silence for this bottle. I love the signature on there, like the curse of Misty or writing. I love the little bow. Um, it's just, it's beautiful. <sighs> this fragrance is something that you could wear, even though these are date night fragrances, you could wear this during the day, particularly if you were the CEO of anything. It's like, when you smell this fragrance, they're like, who's in charge? And they're like, she's in charge. Absolutely her. Um, this is a lovely, lovely, lovely fragrance. This is Turkish Rose Mandarin Orange Tuberose um, in the top and middle notes, but it dries down to patchouli, amber, and vanilla. Oh, this is everything. Very beautiful fragrance. I love the color of the liquid in the bottle. This has great longevity. Um, if you spray it in your clothes, it's going to last. <laughs> Seriously. So love that fragrance. Now we're going to move on to um, a house that's new to me. I saw, I can't remember if it was um, Paulina Shore or if it was Sheree Lewis or Charlene Ford, but all of these great YouTubers who know much more about fragrances than I know. Um, and they talked about this house and the house is called Parfum de Marley. And this particular fragrance is called Safanad. And I think this was released in 2013. But, okay, wait, let me go back. This packaging, it's so substantial. Love the bottle. Love the richness of the juice, the liquid inside, the ties, the go top. Oh. This is so, like surprisingly sweet um, and rich. You would, you would assume the richness from the bottle, but you wouldn't assume that it would be so sweet and heavenly. 
So this starts off so refreshingly with pear and orange blossom. And then it goes to ylang ylang, iris, and then it ends in sandalwood, amber, and vanilla. It is complex. It is unexpected. Um, who doesn't like spontaneity in someone that they love? So great date night fragrance. Yes. So the next one, also from Parfums de Marley. This is, oh, my fingerprints on it made it greasy. <laughs> but, um, this is Athalia. <sighs> These bottles make me happy. This is beautiful. I think by far they are um, really changing the game on stateliness of their bottles and their packaging. Their marketing is just bar none. This is great. Um, this particular fragrance also opens up pretty bright, which is surprising um, for such a bottle that looks more like um, almost like museum-ish, super opulent. I think about when I see the bottle, I'm thinking like um, Arc de Triomphe and <laughs> Buckingham Palace. And it's not what you expect when you actually smell the perfume. This is Orange Blossom. This is Iris. This is Amber. This is White Musk. Um, I don't know which one of these are my favorite. They're both lovely. I think I will keep re-upping those. Um, they're just beautiful fragrance. It's very sexy, um, perfect for actually fall going into winter. Um, these make me feel cozy. This is a warm coat. This is a big scarf. But underneath, she has on like her fitted jeans and her, uh, you know, booties um, or a thigh high boot if you want to do that, honey. It's just, it's beautiful. So, next house. Um, opulent, decadent, um, makes beautiful clothes, um, love it, and that would be Tom Ford. So this is actually Black Orchid by Tom Ford. I love the flask bottle. I love the rib detail. This is a substantial bottle. Um, yes, yes. <laughs> so this is um, Bergamot. Um, Ylang Ylang and Patchouli. Um, actually, honestly, I don't love Ylang Ylang. Um, I think what makes this so happy is the sweetness, the citrus um, lightness of the bergamot. And then I had never smelled Black Orchid before, um, but I love the way they have the floral note kind of in the middle. And then it ends with patchouli, and I do love patchouli. So, very sexy. Um, that's a nighttime fragrance and it lasts and it's strong. So the next one also from Tom Ford is Tom Ford Noir Parfum. It has the same ribbing, has a lot of gold detailing. I actually love the bottle of Black Orchid more than the bottle of Noir Parfum. However, as far as fragrance, I think I actually like Noir Parfum better, which is so interesting because Black Orchid is more feminine and I feel like Noir Parfum is more unisex, but I think that might be why I like it because this is more versatile for more situations. You could wear this at night um, for sexy date night, but you could also wear this for a casual like evening, like we're in. I'm cooking for you. It's still by candlelight. We're going to end it with um, a little movie. Or I could wear this um, for fall evenings as well. Like we're all meeting up. We're going to um, go bowling. Or um, Halloween's coming up. We're going to wear this to a haunted house. Um, so this is like, it can be casual or it can be fancy. I also think that this could be a fragrance that a man could wear too. So a man or a woman, even though this is a parfum, um, eau de parfum, I think a man or a woman could wear it because it's one of those easier wears. Um, whereas Black Orchid at first, you're like, what the heck was that? And it needs to grow on you and it's very specific and you're gonna know as soon as you smell it exactly what it is. Um, if you know Tom Ford, you know, oh, that's Tom Ford Black Orchid, and she is daring and she's not playing. Um, 
but I do think the Noir Pour Femme is friendlier <laughs> to wear. Um, so yeah. Last but not least, and this is definitely my favorite, when you think of perfume houses, you think of this brand because they are everything. <laughs> and that would be none other than Chanel. And this is Chanel Coco Noir. This fragrance, baby. <sighs> this fragrance is engulfing, bewitching, sexy. Yes. It's fancy. It's opulent. Oh, it makes me so happy. So, this little gem right here is very seductive. The bottle is heavy. Um, it's stately. It's beautiful. Um, this is May Rose. This is geranium, rose leaf. It's tonka bean and patchouli. I didn't realize how many fragrances that I had that had a ton of flowers in it because when I think of fragrances for myself, I think I like citrus fruits, so I like orange, I like lemon, particularly in my summer fragrances. And in the winter, I thought that I was all woody and amber. I'm like, love, love, love the richness of amber. I love vanilla. I like to feel like, I, I call this my diabetic cocktail, like I'm having a nice, rich um, cup of coffee along with pastries, and I love to bake. Um, and so I thought that's what I was leaning towards, but a lot of the fragrances have patchouli, yangling. Um, they also have my favorites to end with, the base notes being amber and vanilla. Um, and that's just the sense that I think of when I think of fall. Now, some of these fragrances could translate for the day, um, particularly Miss Dior could be a very good daytime fragrance. Um, and Pure Poison, I think as well. Um, but I just, I love fall, I'm very excited. These are fragrances that could translate to from fall to winter as well. So, I hope you like this video. I want to talk about all things lifestyle um, and doing things that put us in the best position to get the most out of life. So the Divin Details is all about planning, living your life with purpose, having vision and goals, and then executing them. And that would be anywhere from money, um, management, um, acquiring more wealth, um, proper stewardship of your um, finances, to um, self-care, dressing nice, smelling nice, taking care of your hair and your skin and wearing makeup. If any of those things appeal to you, please help my small but growing channel and hit that subscribe button and a like is always appreciated. Take care. Bye-bye.